I'm not even saying about money. Uh, I don't know anything like that. I just I see love black and they've been there. And y'all don't know what time we in the day. It's very important. Um, it's short. I'll probably only grab a couple of scriptures. Second Corinthians 10 and 4. The time that we in the day, like when you look at all the crime that's being committed, not only, like one thing black people, we got to face the reality of, not only is the so-called white man oppressing us, but we're oppressing each other too. Exactly. You know, you know what I'm saying? So like, if you look at the, what's taking place in Baltimore with that brother that got killed and had his back broke, right? Now, Memorial Day weekend, 29 brothers shot each other in Baltimore. The same exact weekend. So the fight is with the so-called white man and it's with our oppressor. You know what I mean? So the time of wasting time of endless debates, endless arguments, and all of that, if it's really not going to be for the uplift for the black people, then really what are we doing? That's right. You what I'm saying? So that's really in which I admire AOC, Lions of Israel, the brothers that are here, the work that they put in. You know what I'm saying? Because we're all in this for one common goal to raise enough brothers and sisters to provoke the most high to send Christ back, kill our enemies, and make the hell out of us. Come on. Check your in chapter 10, verse 4. For, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. When they're saying the weapons of our warfare is not carnal, because we're not going to be able to fight the white man. Like brothers kill me, them old militant Black Panther type cats that say we're going to get guns and fight the white man. But when you run out of bullets, you got to go to the same devil. That Come on. Right. Come on. You know what I mean? Like the weapons of our warfare is not part of it. Even when you think about when we was in Egypt, what we asked Pharaoh, what Moses asked Pharaoh to do, he didn't even ask Pharaoh to leave Egypt. He just asked Pharaoh if they could serve the Most High for three days. And that wasn't good enough. And because he rejected that order, the Lord sent the plagues. So imagine if we just gathered ourselves together like the scriptures say and served the Most High and then the white man rejected us. Then the Most High would send them same plagues on the so-called white man that he sent on the Egyptians. So we're not going to beat them with no physical battle. You know what I mean? Even the crack ep epidemic, that ain't a physical battle even though you think it is. Like that's a spiritual battle because I don't see other nations as addicted to this drug as we are. Like, it's like damn it, like they specifically targeted something in the Puerto Rican and the blacks genome or something to where that crap just hooks them to where they'll sell their child for this drug. You understand? So the weapons of warfare are not common read. But mighty through Yahweh to pull down the stronghold. That's not the long the stronghold now. But it does require an action, which we're going to find out in the scriptures. But it's not something, like everybody, especially in that Christian church or Muslim mosque, or people just think that I'm going to pray to the Most High and he should just do it. No. Like, you ever heard that term, since I let God back into my life? Yeah. You ever heard that nonsense? Yes. It's damn near like taking away the power. Like, I got the power to stop the Most High from coming into my life. Ooh. You understand? Like, that's basically what you're saying when you make that statement. But it requires an action. To simply stop eating pork can change your life. Like when you think about that, like Christ said, he that breaketh the least commandment shall be the least. That's one of the least commandments. Just like thou shalt not murder. These are all things like the brother brought out the 613 laws. They're not grievous. It ain't really that hard to not eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, not get high, not hustle, not commit adultery. It ain't really that hard, but you just have to fight yourself. That's when the battle starts. Keep reading. Catch it down. Imagination and every high thing that exalts itself. Because the most most highest thing that I see is that Caesar was there. Like the biggest battle that you got the minute that you say Christ is black, or the minute you mention Jesus. I mean, even for me when I first came into the truth, the white boy popped up. Every time, like even so, like it ain't as hard for me now. But when you say Jesus around me, white boy pop up, affection, love, the white man pop up in your brain. Because that's what we have to pull down. That's why it's important for y'all brothers in the camp to have the real image of Christ out or to have devil on the siege of Brazil because then it provokes people to say, but well, why do you have devil on that image? Because they believe that it is, and then it's a teaching method. But that's how these are gonna get pulled down by doing actual work. Can you read? And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. And I don't know nothing that don't exalt itself against the Most High. Nothing. Whether you're in Islam, 
where they put Muhammad, if you want to be a fruit of Islam, where they say Far Muhammad was Allah in the flesh, which was another white man. That's why they call him Master Far Muhammad. What was we calling Far Muhammad? What was we calling white man before Far Muhammad? Master. And then they give Elijah Muhammad honorable Elijah, like damn near like honorable mention. Like he wasn't good enough to be the master. The master is the white man, but he's the honorable mention. There's no stronghold that does not turn us away from the most high. You go into Hinduism, it's the same thing. Buddhism is the same thing. Right. Christian church ain't nothing about that about Christ. Nothing. There's not one. And when I first heard that, because I, I come up from a Christian background. And so when I was told that there's nothing that the Christian church do right, I start thinking, I start asking the teacher and say, well, what about baptism? Wrong. What about the laws being done away with? Wrong. What about immaculate conception? Wrong. What about hell? So all of these things I'm being told is wrong, and then it made me totally turn away from the Christian church and then truly serve the Most High. Keep reading. And bring into captivity everything ought to the obedience of Yahweh Shai. And that's what we have to do when it's say. Like Paul said, I'm a prisoner of Christ. And when he says I'm a prisoner of Christ, it's not like um, us being in a white man's prison or in slavery or something like that. It's being he's fully locked in to what Yahweh laid down for us to do. Like what Christ did, like the brother brought out early when, he, when Christ said, be therefore perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. It's something that we're supposed to do. And we're not going to do it if we don't lock ourselves in. If we don't become prisoners, like Christ was a prisoner of the Most High. Whatever the Most High said, when, when Christ was about to die, he asked the Most High to take it away. But your will be done because he was totally locked into what the Father said. And that's what we have to be. If we expect to wake other people up, whether you wake one person up, 10 people, 100 people, we expect to wake these people up, you will have to be locked in to the Most High as well in your walk, in your talk, in your carry, in your action, because everybody is looking at us specifically. Like the Israelites, regardless of whether they want to believe it or not believe it, we are the most watched people on the face of the planet, and they're looking at everything you do and waiting for you to slip up. So they can see, Ashad did this, now I ain't got to follow him no more. Or Tazar, y'all did this, I ain't got to follow him. Daniel did this, so I ain't got to follow him. But imagine if those men ain't breaking none of that. Now you can't say nothing against them. So if you can't say nothing against them, why not join them? You feel what I'm saying? Come on. And having in a readiness to, re to, re to resent all disobedience. Now, the Most High has the readiness. It's not like we waiting on the Most High, the Most High waiting on us. That's why I said he has a readiness to revenge us. Like the scripture say, vengeance is mine, just said the most high. So he has a readiness to revenge for us. Like he's ready to send them soldiers, to send them chariots to revenge us. Keep reading. When your obedience is fulfilled. That's the most important part to this walk that we in. When our obedience is filled, that's when we'll get revenge. That's when we can have the white man under our boot. That's when every white baby, the feet is all of them can just die and we put them down. That'll be a glorious day. As violent as it may sound, because I remember reading stories of how they be out of babies. How they be out of moms. How they be out of moms. So why can't I glory in the day that I can take that little baby and just smash the food? It's establishing laws, it's establishing the commandments, and it's establishing the throne and authority of the Most High, because that's the authority that we're under. That's why the Lord's Prayer says, Our Father which art in heaven, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Now the left apart, thy will be done, which of course is just as important. I'll give one, one last scripture. Give me Ephesians 6 and um, 12. <laughs> Because that's the most important thing that we have to do. And I don't want to take away, I never want to take away from what the brothers is doing. They ask me to do this. I usually try to stay quiet or something like that. Contrary to what people think about me, I try not to be so much in the limelight as much. Um, you got the scripture for me? Can you read it for me, please? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Mm -hmm. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. This is, this is, this is piggybacking right off of 2 Corinthians 10. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, agree? But against principalities. But against principalities. Like, the government is the one that put the crack in there. First they started with the dope in the 70s. In the 60s and 70s it was dope. And then in the 80s it was crack. Now you got syrup or lean or whatever these young boys is drinking and smoking and selling because that's what's against us. 
It's not like, like, like if someone beats up a white boy, right? You might feel good, but that's not the big picture. What is, what is the big picture beating up five white boys when the goddamn United States government is targeting us every day? Planned Parenthood specifically targets poor black women and men to get them to kill our babies. Come on. We're killing a half a million black babies every year, just like in Exodus. That's why when the scriptures say you'll be born into Egypt again, it's everything. It ain't just the slave ships. It's the diseases that we get. It's the abortion. It's the way that they methodically kill us. Methodically get us drunk. Methodically get us high. We're the ones that's specific because the suburbs don't get looked like, like that. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm from in Jersey, you got two different hoods. You got your black neighborhood and you got the white neighborhood. The trees grow in the white neighborhood. The doors, you know, the, the stores, like they got the gate down in the black stores. But in the white stores, they don't. And I never understood that when I was little. My mother was driving me from um, South Orange all the way down to North, where I'm from in Jersey. And so as we ride through South Orange, I'm looking at the stores, and all the stores look nice. You can see inside the stores. They ain't got no gates, ain't no broken bottles. But the closer I got to North, you saw a distinct difference. You start seeing the gates. You start seeing liquor stores every other corner. You start seeing the crack vial. You start seeing zombies, which we call crackheads, all throughout. So you see a clear distinction because we're specifically targeted. So it's not a flesh and blood battle where you're going to beat somebody up and feel good. We have to be able to beat the principality that's against us. So now if they got their power, we have to go to our power. And our power is the most high. And he can defeat anybody. Keep reading. That. Against powers. Mm -hmm. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The darkness of this world. To be a Christian is to be in darkness, to be a Muslim, five percent of atheist, conscious nigga, one of them conscious cats, all of them are in darkness. Right, right. Praise Allah, he didn't Time say more. Oh my God, please don't say more. And I never knew people believe that yes, he was like that. Yes, he didn't before, say more. Before, before yes. they never came in front of our camp and actually debated us. I didn't know people believe in these so-called gods that masturbate in their own mouth, which I'm pretty sure Shaw might get into, to bring forth creation, and this one having sex with that one, and anal sex, and I never think that people actually believed in that. But then I didn't think people believed in Santa Claus either. <laughs> and I, mean, I didn't think people believed in Frosty the Snowman either. But you got people that believe in that. Because that's how destroyed of a people we are. Where we'll believe that a white man could come down a chimney in the ghetto at that. In the ghetto and do that. So if we could believe that, we could for sure believe that somebody masturbated in his mouth. <laughs> now how idiotic does that sound? But you got people that believe and follow that. So in our battle, in this war that we have, meaning the Hebrew Israelites have, is not against each other, and it's not against one individual man. It's against the powers that be that are on top of us. And I don't want to take up too much of your time. That's all I want to say. I appreciate y'all.